Good day, everyone. We at Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems welcome you and thank you for attending our next in a series of educational webinars entitled Classifying Flow Properties of Solids Using the Car Indices. This will be a general presentation. Let me point out, if you have a question during this presentation, you may submit your question online. Please refer to the Q&A pane on your screen. At the conclusion of the webinar, we will try to accommodate all of the questions during our question and answer forum. My name is Bill Brown. I am the Division Manager of the Chemicals and Minerals Group at Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems. Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems is a division of Hosokawa Micron Group with headquarters in Osaka, Japan. We are the global leader in powder processing equipment manufacturing, employing over 1,500 employees worldwide with production facilities in five countries, and 12 research facilities and state-of-the-art test centers. Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems is the North American division of Hosokawa Micron Group, supplying products and services in the chemical, minerals, food, and pharmaceutical markets. Our brand names include Micro, Alpine, Micron, Vriconota, Majac, Stott, and Vitalair. Our division was founded in 1923 under the name Pulverizing Machinery. We are located in Summit, New Jersey, and have approximately 50 employees and have been part of the Hosokawa Micron Group for 23 years. At this point, I would like to turn the presentation over to Mr. Timothy Calvo, Laboratory and Analytical Equipment Manager for Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems. Tim is a 20-year veteran in the industry and is our in-house specialist responsible for all analytical products and services. Thank you, Bill. Welcome, everyone. Here today we're going to talk about the Carr Indices. In 1965, Ralph Carr, graduate of Northeastern University, published an article detailing alternative methods to evaluating the flow properties of dry powders. In addition to his main article, Ralph developed or prepared four additional articles which are listed here on this particular slide. Today we're going to briefly talk about the actual CAR indices. CAR at that time candidly referred to the overall measurement of powders as flowability and floodability. It's difficult to give a clear definition of the flowability of powder. However, it's regarded as the degree of easiness of relative movement of powder from a stationary to a moving condition. Additionally, a powder is characterized to be floodable uh, indicates its unstable liquid-like flow and it's typically a stimuli that has activated this instability and is called and typically undesirable. In 1999, the CAR indices was submitted to ASTM for the development of a standard. As you can see here, the standard has been revisited in 2008 and has been updated. The standard was under the jurisdiction of the ASTM Committee D-18. Prior to the development of the CAR indices, flowability of powder was performed by flowing a powder through a funnel with a defined orifice. This method, however, was considered unsuitable or suitable for primary but unsuitable for uh, materials that did not have a general flowability like glass beads, seeds, etc. Common applications, research and development, quality control, process monitoring. These are all areas where the particular methods are implemented. Physical factors influencing uh, the powder flowability, particle size, fineness, shape, friction coefficient, cohesiveness, adhesiveness, electrostatic charge, compressibility, moisture, temperature, humidity, etc. Particle properties commonly associated with free flowing powders alias with good flowability, they are identified as narrow particle size distribution, small surface areas or spherical particles, 
low cohesiveness, high hardness, minimally induced electrostatic charge or activity, non-hygroscopic, high particle density, and low particle compressibility. Now, on the other hand, floodable. These are the properties that would directly relate to floodable powders. Large surface area, spherical shape, uniform particle size, exist as individual particles, does not agglomerate, low particle density, very dusty, and non-hygroscopic. The car methods, as listed below, were based upon measurement of several properties of approximately 3,000 different materials. One thing I would like to bring to your attention prior to actually performing these various methods is that in order to actually get a full indication or identification of the flowability or floodability of a powder, one should know the particle size distribution of the sample being analyzed. Secondly, if the sample is a blend, a mixture, or a formulation, know the percentages of each of those components. For if any of those percentages or, or blends or mixtures change, they will have a direct effect on the flowable characteristic as well as the floodable characteristic of the material. Now, as far as flowability, we're going to talk briefly about the angle of repose aerated density, pack density, compressibility, angle of spatula, cohesion, or as Carr would refer to it as cohesion or uniformity. It's one or the other. Then under floodability, angle of fall, angle of difference, dispersibility, and then what we do here is we also take the overall evaluation of the flowability measurements and incorporate that into the floodability to get an overall value of the material. We'll talk now about the car angle of repose. Car angle of repose is basically the measurement of the angle between the horizontal and the slope of a heap of a powder which has been dropped from a defined elevation onto a defined platform using a flow control device alias the sieve as your mechanism to control the flow. The material is then heaped onto the platform, the measurement is taken. Now, the lower the car angle of repose value, the higher the degree of flowability. Car angle of fall. This is a measurement that is determined after the car angle of repose heap of material has been jarred or impacted, resulting in a reconfiguration of the initial heap of material. Once again, in this particular case, the car angle of fall if it is low, then the flowability, or pardon me, floodability, is deemed high. The car angle of difference. This is one of the supportive measurements of the car methods. The car angle of difference is merely a calculation of the car angle of repose minus the car angle of fall, which then defines the car angle of difference. However, should the car angle of difference be high, then the floodability in general is high. Car, aid, or car aerated bulk density. Basically the mass per volume of loose powder in grams per cubic centimeter. In this case here, Carr used a 100 cc cup as his standard uh, control vessel. The material was aerated or gently uh, introduced into the cup, overfilling the cup, and then eliminating the excess material by scraping off the cup. You'll notice that a sieve was used. However, again, the sieve is used primarily as a flow control device. It is not designed or intended to separate the material. This allows for sufficient aeration to take place during the analysis. The car pack density or bulk density. Um, sometimes it's also referred to as tap density. This is the mass per volume of packed powder grams per cc. Once again, the car used a 100 cc container or vessel, which also had a retainer 
which had the same volume. The vessel was filled with material. In this case here, it can either be aerated or hand-filled. And then that particular uh, vessel is tapped. Carr utilized 180 uh, taps, that is, with a stroke of 18 millimeter. Now, typically speaking, this has been done automatically by means of a mechanism that allowed the vessel to be raised and lowered the 180 uh, times. Car compressibility. The ability of a powder to be compressed within a specific container. Car used, once again, the 100cc cup. What's occurring here with this is the fact that we've taken the aerated density over the pack density to identify how much additional material had been introduced into the 100cc cup or vessel. In this case here, Carr utilizes this information as to determine the flowability. So the lower the flow compressibility, the higher the degree of flowability. The Carr angle of spatula. This measurement provides additional information about the powder flowability similar to the car angle of repose. However, in this case here, a pan is flood with material and then the pan is dropped, exposing a spatula. Uh, the spatula is then uh, measured with the first angle. Once the angle is defined and identified, the spatula is jarred or impacted causing for a change in the heap of material. The actual angle of spatula is determined by taking the angle prior to impacting, the angle after impacting, taking the average of those angles, and defining that as a car angle of spatula. Now in this case here, the lower the car angle of spatula, the higher the degree of flowability. Some people might say, ask, what is this particular method used for? A typical application in this particular case, because this is so much you know, subjective, might be the determination of how much material may collect on a probe that is in a power, uh, powder flow stream. Uh, this could possibly affect how the material is going to be handled. Car cohesion versus car uniformity. In the car indices, it's either one or the other. And this has allowed car to look at uh, different particle sized materials and still be able to identify and determine an overall value. What is first needed to be uh, defined is the mean bulk density, basically the aerated plus the packed divided by two. In the event that the material does not meet the criteria, for example, less than 0.4 grams per cc, uh, and the particle size is greater than 150 micron. Should this be the case, then rather than performing a car into our uniformity, pardon me, the car cohesion will then perform, or perform the car uniformity test. And as you can see by means of the chart here, there are three different grades in which CAR has identified as the mean bulk density as well as the particle size fineness. Keep in mind, 100% of the material must be finer than the three levels, 150 micron, 75 micron, or 45 micron. The car cohesion then, once we've established the fact that we've met the criteria to perform the car cohesion, we then take and introduce a 2 gram sample onto the stack of corresponding screens. Keeping in mind, once again, not to be repetitive, but 100% of the material must pass through the finest screen. What we're doing here is determining the natural cohesion of the material. Once the material has been entered onto the top screen, a one millimeter amplitude vibration is impressed upon the stack, allowing the material to flow through the stack of screens without any degradation of the material whatsoever. 
The screens are then weighed after the fact to determine how much material has been collected on each of those screens, typically by a natural cohesion effect. Carr's definition, of course, here is the higher the cohesive value, the lower the flowability. Carr uniformity. This method identifies the similarity of powder particles using a sieve analysis. One thing that needs to be kept in mind, at the time Carr developed the set of standards, laser diffraction type particle size analysis devices were not invented yet. This was back in 1965. So as a result, what we need to do is to identify the D60 as well as the D10 of the sample utilizing sieve screens. In this case here, Carr has deemed that the higher the uniformity, the higher the flowability. Carr dispersibility. This method identifies the dustiness of a powder. Commonly a 10 gram sample is dropped from, in this case here, a 24 inch altitude onto a pre teared watch glass to determine how much of that material actually is collected on the watch glass or retained and or in the event that the sample comes in contact with the watch glass does that material stay together as a clump or does it splatter? What we then do is we reweigh the watch glass to determine how much material has actually been collected on the watch glass. Cars defined here that the higher the dispersibility the higher the floodability. Once the methods have been concluded, you then can refer to the CAR indices chart, in this case here, flowability. As you can see, each of the chart, or the chart has four different categories. Keeping in mind, as I said earlier, uniformity or cohesion is taken into effect. CAR has then taken and identified the fact that we look at a 100-point value. The 100-point value is then calculated, and it's also classed as, or classed as an index value. The higher the value for flowability, the greater the actual flowability. Floodability, on the other hand, we take a collective value from the flowability, introduce that into the equation, once again, looking at four here, so you have 25 points for each category. And then taking into consideration the angle of fall, angle of difference, and dispersibility to determine what the floodability index is relative to that particular sample. Over the years, in an effort to reduce human subjectivity while performing the car methods, Instruments have gone from strictly manual, which you'll see here, to computer-assisted. This eliminates the subjectivity and provides a higher degree of repeatability to the, uh, during the analysis. Um, okay. Now we begin our question and answer forum. As we are limited on time, we will try to accommodate all the questions, but apologize in advance if we are not able to answer all of them. If we are not able to address your questions at this time, someone from Hosokawa will respond to you offline at a later date. Tim, uh, the first question I see here, please define floodable. In accordance with Carr, this is the unstable um, characteristic of a powder that once it's moving, what additional external influences can be impressed upon the powder to cause it to react unsuitably? Uh, for example, if you just envision a, uh, let's say, a volume of jello, just as an example, and you drop it from an altitude after opening a slide gate, will that jello stay intact as it hits the table or platform that it's directed towards? or will it become airborne and dispersed? Floodable is also that uncontrollable effect. So once it's actually been released, can it be contained, or does it just haphazardly uh, 
move about within the vessel or outside the vessel. Next question. How much sample is required to perform all of the methods? Commonly because the 100cc cup is a standard in accordance with CAR that it has been determined anywhere between three to 500 cc's of material should be adequate to perform all of the methods in accordance with CAR. The critical issue will come in if you are determining the compressibility first. And if you define that the fact that you've got a high level of compressibility, you could actually skew the results of prior tests. Um, my recommendation in performing various tests would be to perform all of the, for example, the car angle of repose, car angle of fall, car angle of difference, and leave the compression test as the last test. So that kind of leads into a question that may or may not have been asked previously is, is there a specific routine or format for performing the tests? And the answer is no. Provided you have sufficient volume of sample, you can perform any of the tests at any time. Next question. Is it necessary to use a fresh sample for each method? Again, as I just reiterated here, uh, that depending upon which test is performed first, no, it's not necessary. The key, however, is if you are using a fresh sample, is to make certain that your sample is homogeneous with the prior sample. Your particle size distribution must be the same. You just cannot take an arbitrary sample from one batch to another batch and it, without knowing the particle size distribution and expect to get the same results. Next question. What is the mesh size used for bulk and tapped density? In accordance with the CAR method, typically speaking, it's a 710 micron. Um, now, that may present an issue if you're trying to characterize materials of finer particle size. Uh, of late, and in accordance with the ASTM standard, there has been a little bit more, let's say, concern towards that because if you're trying to analyze a 10 micron powder and you're trying to control the flow with a 710 micron screen, that's virtually impossible. So there may be a little bit of experimentation. However, keep in mind that the screen that is utilized must permit all of the sample to pass through. None of it is to be separated. Next question. How do you test for cohesion using CAR methods? Again, the cohesion test is performed utilizing a small sample, basically two grams. It is then um, placed on the stack of screens. But keep in mind, as I mentioned during the presentation, you need to identify the mean bulk density. The mean bulk density must comply within the parameters that CAR has set. So it's anywhere between, well, it's actually 0 .0, or pardon me, 0.4 grams per cc to greater than 0.9 grams per cc. And the particle size must be finer than 150 micron to 45 micron. If these parameters are not met, then it is not recommended to perform the cohesion test. Once, once you've met those parameters, the sample is placed on the uppermost screen and a one millimeter amplitude is impressed upon the stack of screen for a predetermined period of time. The period of time has been set by CAR, and with the, today's instruments, you then can, you know, pretty much it calculates the time, but typically it's about 80 seconds to 115 seconds, depending upon the mean bulk density. Once the vibration has concluded, each of the screens are then weighed to determine how much has been retained, or in this case here, how much of that material has agglomerated or become cohesive with other particles. Tim, how do you impact the sample for angle of fall? The impacting of the sample is done by a mechanical device. The mechanical device is, has got a predetermined, um, let's say, g-force because the height of the device is approximately 12 inches. It is shocked three times. This deforms the heap of material at which then we identify how much that material has had the opportunity to flow against itself to determine what the angle of fall is. Tim, is there one piece of equipment that can run all of the tests? 
Uh, in today's market, there is one unit that does or that is manufactured that can perform all the tests and provide overall index values, taking out the subjectivity of the equipment, or pardon me, of the uh, operator. Tim, if the next question. If my mean bulk density is less than 0 0.4 grams per cc, but my particle size is greater than 150 microns, is it possible to perform the car cohesion test? Once again, 100% of the material must pass through the finest screen. In this case here, CAR has identified that the finest screen is 150 micron. You're not meeting the criteria, so the answer to the question is no. The recommendation would be then to perform the CAR uniformity test to be introduced into the overall evaluation. Tim, are the CAR tests applicable or good for particles of larger particle size from, say, 8 to 16 mesh? Absolutely, provided that you can prepare the, the necessary heaps of material utilizing the, the, the screens that are available. Um, and in today's day, you can get screens anywhere between 20 micron to 4,750 micron, alias 635 mesh to 4 mesh. Uh, and as long as they can pass through the various mechanisms necessary to perform the, or to build the heaps, you can perform um, flow characteristics on any dry powder within that parameter. Tim, what methods can we use when, uh, excuse me, to eliminate subjectivity when comparing to older, more mechanical, manual methods? Well, keeping in mind that you've got today with the electronics, um, there are methods and, and there are devices out there now that use CCD cameras uh, that actually either use laser mechanisms to define the angles. There's also more accurate balances that are used today. Uh, in addition, when you're utilizing a sieve screen specifically for the cohesion test, the sieve screen should be ASTM certified and should be complete with a histogram so that you can identify any levels of deviation in the, in the analysis. Next question. My powder is light and fluffy and is discharged from a dust collector through a rotary airlock. I would like to pack more material into, into my 20-gallon containers. Is there a test to indicate how much material I could potentially fill into my 20-gallon collection containers? Yes, the compressibility test can be used to provide this type of information. You necess it's necessary then to identify what the aerated density is and then perform the packed or tap density, at which time you can identify the additional percentage of material that can be introduced into that particular vessel. Carr again used a 100 cc. He used the 100 cc with his particular methods. I have another question here, and I apologize for Bill, but while we're on that particular subject, what is the difference between the USP as well as the CAR method? CAR has, of compressibility, that is, or pack density. CAR developed his method, again, using a specific stroke, an 18-millimeter stroke, um, with the 100cc vessel. When you're doing the USP method, there's quite a bit of subjectivity because typically a glass vial is used and the operator must identify the volume of material that's been aerated into the vial. In addition, the, let's say the frequency of tapping is much more rapid using a glass vial density test. Uh, so that when, when you're looking at the car method, the car method is number one, less number of taps. USP, I don't believe I mentioned, is 240 taps. But yet, it is much more repeatable because of the fact that we're controlling the height and we're taking out the uh, operator influence from that aspect. Tim, one final question. What effect do electrostatic forces have on the particles have with respect to the accuracy? The, electro, the electrostatic charge of a particle can cause the particles to either become attracted to each other or repel each other. Uh, a good determination of that particular method would be the dispersibility test. 
because at that particular point in time when you're dropping the material onto the watch glass, either the material will stay together as a clump or it will become airborne and just disperse throughout that particular vessel. Uh, so from that aspect, the electrostatic charge can and does have a very important part in the analysis. Additionally, electrostatic charge can be influenced by uh, uh, the humidity within the atmosphere and that the material is being analyzed. There are many cases where the methods have been used for process control, whereas in the plant site you may have a specific humidity, but in the R&D site you now have a controlled humidity. These are all factors that should be identified during the analysis and referred to after the fact. I'd also like to mention the fact that keep in mind that while the CAR indices identify parameters, this is an intermediate step within the overall evaluation of a powder. You should know, as I mentioned earlier, your formulation, percentages, your particle size distribution. Once you have that, then you identify the powder further by performing the CAR methods. Once you have that, then you send that powder on to your customer, whether it's internal or external. Have them run the material and identify if the material is good or bad for their particular use, because every material is unique in its own right. Once you have that information, then the material can come back and alterations to the blend or, or the, even the particle size can affect the flow characteristics. Thank you, Tim. We at Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems sincerely thank you for your time and attention today. Please refer to our website, hmicronpowder.com, to view upcoming educational webinars. If you have any further questions or requests, you may contact Tim Calvo directly. His contact information is displayed here. One other note, this presentation will be posted on our website, so if you know of any colleagues who may be interested in viewing this or prior webinars, they may do so by accessing our website. Again, we thank you and good day.